Michael from Team Flex. We are here on Games the Clock, my Q&A series I run for you every single week. Today we are covering 12 different competitor questions from the fan base out here. We're talking about wellness, bikini, classic physique, I think there's some figure, uh, men's physique in there. We got a lot. Please do me a favor, when you get this video through any time, hit subscribe and then share it out for me, okay? Drop me a thumbs up, let me know what you think of the show, what you think of the channel. I appreciate you all being here so much. All right, my goal with Games O'Clock is to pretty much just answer these questions as quickly as I can, get you the information that you have, you know, need for. And uh, the kind of idea behind the whole show is if somebody else has a question, it's likely somebody else needs the answer too, and they might not even know to have that question, all right? So that's what we do on here today. It's all about you competitors, all right? Let's rock and roll. Question number one. This is from Katie. How long should first prep be? Katie, this is a good question. Uh, first preps, I always say have a little bit of extra time. And I think I've answered this question a few times on the channel, but if you haven't seen that before, I understand why it's coming up again. I always say first preps should be, you know, about 16 weeks or more, okay? A lot comes down to where you're at and uh, where you've been, you know what I mean? Like if you're relatively close, to be being at a stage physique, um, or maybe you're really overweight or something like that, and you have more weight to lose, it's gonna change the length of your prep, no doubt, right? We're gonna have a different length of the prep depending on where you're at. So I always say 16 weeks though is a general starting point at a minimum, minimum of 16 weeks because it allows for extra flexibility, changes, things that could happen, things that couldn't happen, you know what I mean? It just gives you more time with you and your coach to figure out what's gonna be the best approach. Because doing your first prep, it's, you know, in a lot of ways, it's figuring out exactly how your body's gonna respond and you know as a coach I know from coaching tons and tons of competitors when I do first preps I want to give them a little extra time most of the time because I know that hey they might come through some hurdles some stuff might change in their life and I also got to learn this athlete this client I got to figure out where this person is and you know how they're gonna respond to everything and that way it gives us a little bit more leeway if you're ready in advance that's far better than not being ready when the time comes okay question number two how many days a week is normal to do cardio on a bikini prep? This is from Amber. Uh, Amber, great question. So cardio is going to be pretty strict down to where your actual physique is in relation to where it needs to be, okay? So you might be doing cardio every day. It depends on if you need it or not, right? I mean, the goal at the end of the day is to get to your competition in place and do well, right? So if you need the cardio to get to that spot, because let's say you're holding more body fat than you should be at whatever point in your prep, and maybe you're already dieting, maybe you don't want to diet further, or your coach doesn't want to diet you down more, you might need to be doing more cardio. For me, when I coach competitors, uh, I try to avoid doing as much cardio as possible, okay? So cardio is a last resort for me as a coach. Um, I'm trying to coach with training and nutrition for the majority of what I'm doing to attain competition physiques with my clients, okay? And some of my Competitors, bikini girls, wellness, men's physique, etc. They get through whole preps without doing any cardio. Some people I have to program them every day. Some people need it every other day. It's just all individual, all different. Really based on the person, really based on the physique. This is why it's a great thing, you know, to have a coach that can learn your body, figure out what's going to work best for you, and can get you to the end game. Because, you know, there's a million generic things you could Google or, you know, other competitors would say, oh, do this, do that. But in reality, it's all coming down to you and Anyway, every physique is different, every athlete is different, you are different than everyone else, and so the way that you gotta go about your prep is gonna be different too. Question number three, fam. Gains the clock. Thanks for being here. Please make sure you subscribe if you have not yet. I'm eight weeks out and I don't feel lean enough for my competition. Should I be freaking out? This is Jessica. 
Jessica, I'll tell you straight up, this does happen to a lot of people. I'm going to say that you're probably a first timer or you're a beginner in general because eight weeks out from your competition is so far out from your competition. But people for some reason do freak out when they start to get closer, even at like, you know, eight, 12 weeks, whatever. If you're doing a longer prep and you're at 12 weeks, you might think, oh no, I'm not where I need to be. But in reality, you know, the goal of a competition is to bring your best physique on competition day. It's not to have your best physique eight weeks out, okay? So, you know, in reality, you're not going to be at all relatively close to where you should be on stage day eight weeks out, even four weeks out, you know, down to like even the last 10 to, 10 to 14 days, you're going to probably not be in the physique that you're going to be in on stage, you know? So that's something you really want to pay attention to as a competitor is make sure, hey, you don't have unrealistic expectations for where you should be in different parts of your prep because in reality, you know, depending on where you're at, how many weeks out, that's going to be a point that you need to be at for sure for that amount of weeks, but it's not a competition day physique and it's not likely you're going to feel stage ready eight weeks out, four weeks out, or even maybe two, right? So your goal should be to come in to your physique and your best physique on competition day because that's what matters. It doesn't matter where you're at, eight weeks, four weeks, two weeks, even now, it's going to matter what shows up on comp day. So really important that you make sure you understand that as a competitor, otherwise you'll get in your own head and you'll do the wrong stuff. This is why it's great to have a coach, somebody like me, right? If one of my clients does this, which they do all the time, let me be honest, they'll come at me and be like, hey, I'm not feeling ready, I'm not feeling good, I'm not feeling here and there. And I'm going to say, you know what? Stick to the fucking plan, okay? Zip your mouth, stick to the damn plan because I already know where you should be and you're actually where you should be even though you don't feel it. It's going to pay off, right? So you got to have somebody that's going to keep you in line when your brain goes on you because it's good. It will. It's part of the process. You're going to second guess everything. You're going to be concerned all the time about where you're at. And at the end of the day, if you make it or you don't, we'll come down to if you can be consistent despite the thoughts that are in your damn head, all right? Hope that helps you out there, Jessica. Okay, question number four. This is from Melissa. I've been doing the same meal plan for four weeks straight, and I'm getting so bored, but my coach won't change it. Is this normal? Melissa, I will say uh, I don't even put people on meal plans for the most part. You know, as a Team Flex coach, we're not doing that. We do macros for the most part, let people have more variety, let them have more flexibility, let them, you know, kind of pick their own meals most of the time. Now, if somebody on our team wants a meal plan, yeah, we'll build one. But is it going to stay the same for how long do you say? You've been on it for four weeks straight. Yeah, I mean, it's... No, I wouldn't do that. I, I would say that's not normal. I would say that's normal if you have a very not dedicated, you know, on the lower tier kind of side of coaching and coach. Like if you have a coach that's not fully invested in you and trying to get you your best and, you know, maybe you try to cut corner. I don't know who your coach is. Maybe you try to hire a cheaper coach or something like that. Well, that's what you get. You get these generic kind of PDF meal plans and these other things and then they don't change it for you. They're barely, you know, coaching you at all. In reality, you paid to get a program that was sent out to a bunch of other people at the same time, whatever. It's just not really worth it. What you need to have is a custom meal plan. Uh, if you're going to do a meal plan, a macro approach is even better, you know, but it's the customization, the customized training, customized nutrition, the customized prep is what's going to get you your best physique. There's no doubt about that. Like I keep saying, and I feel like I say it every day of my life, everybody is different. And so with that, you got to understand the way you got to train and you got to eat is going to be different. So these generic like, oh, here's a bikini competitor plan. Here's a figure competitor plan. Well, that doesn't really pay off. It's going to get you some results. Maybe. Yeah, sure. Sticking to any meal plan is better than none. But at the end of the day, is it built for you? Is it going to bring your best? Probably not. And so I would say, you know what? It is normal if you didn't get a coach that's dedicated to you and your, your goals. And if you really, you know, should it be a normal thing? No. It should, it should not be a normal thing. What you should have is a highly variable plan that's going to be adjusting with you, adapting with your progress based on your check-ins, based on your measurements, etc., to make sure that you're getting the absolute best out of it, okay? So that's what I would say there, Melissa. I think I'm playing chess, I see a king, I'm at his neck. I'm three steps ahead of every move, now that's a check. Yes, they wanna know my secret. Alright, this is from Tanya. How many sets do I need per workout for bikini prep? 
This is actually a good question because a lot of competitors, people trying to get ready for shows, way overtrain, especially bikini competitors, because they think that they have to attain these crazy amounts of muscle. But in reality, it's not a crazy amount of muscle you gotta have in bikini. You wanna have shape, you wanna have the right proportions, but you don't need an insane amount of muscle. This is not like figure or, or women's physique or anything like that, right? It's not a super muscular division, um, but you do need the shape. But so. I feel like I'm going to say the same thing again. I don't want to say the same exact thing. First thing I will say real quick, and then I'm going to get off of it, is you got to have something built for you. So it depends on where you're at. It depends on where your physique is, okay? I feel like I say this all the time, and I do. I've already said it like eight times in this video alone. you got to have custom stuff. This is why I tell you. This is why at Team Flex we do everything custom. In fact, if you want to experience that, go to TeamFFLEX.com right now. Anybody watching this, you can try a free trial. Just put your email in. It's custom for you. But in reality, you know, you got to think about the fact that Every workout's gonna be different. Everything needs to be different. It's all gonna be built for you. If you want a generic answer, I would say you probably need, you know, between eight to 10 exercises, three to four sets. And that will be a good ballpark to start with. Now that depends on how you split your days. That depends on if you're trying to do one muscle all day, you're doing a couple, you're doing a push pull, all these things come into play. So I'm sorry I can't give you a better answer. If I have more information on you, Tanya, I could help you more. I strongly encourage you to just go to my website and I'll talk with you about this there. TeamFFLEX.com, subscribe, free trial, and we'll get you on the other side. All right, question number six is from a men's physique competitor here, James. I'm doing men's physique this season. How high should my arms be in the back pose? I've seen a lot of conflicti conflicting things online. Great question, James. Arms on your back pose, you want to actually keep your lats kind of, you know, drawn in more. So you want to have your arms kind of teetering down a bit, okay? A lot of, uh, a lot of, for a while, men's physique posing was like going straight out. The arms were like way up here, and that was almost getting to be the point where you looked like you were an airplane, okay? You know, those competitors out there, and it was, it was narrowing the lats. That's what the issue was. The judges, you know, looking at you from the back, when you got your arms way up, it actually narrows your lats. So you actually want to draw down more, right? And keep your arms more at an angle so you can flex the lat and show that taper because that's what the scoring is really, you know, heavily on right there in the shape proportion of the back post for men's physique. So don't put your arms up too high. I know there's a lot of stuff that's conflicting, a lot of pictures that look conflicting, a lot of pros doing a lot of different stuff. I know from speaking with some of the top level judges uh, that they definitely want to see you draw your arms down more, bring the lat shape through because that's what they're looking at, okay? So don't put your arms up too high. Question number seven. How much ab definition should I have in wellness? This is from Amy. Okay, wellness is coming up. It's been going. It's you know we only got one comp under the belt right now for that, but there's a lot more coming, and a lot of questions have been about this. Where's the ab definition and things like that got to be? Well, for the abs, it's actually not a super score area, just like it is in bikini. Okay, so abs can either help you or hurt you. You don't need them either way. What you got to worry about in wellness and bikini, for that matter, we can just kill two birds one stone. The abs are the same deal here where they want to see you have a flat stomach, you know, but they're not trying to look for a six pack. You're not getting scored on a six pack. In fact, if you are showing a really lean six pack, a lot of times that can score you down in both bikini and wellness because it kind of shows overall that maybe you're too conditioned for that division. The conditioning for both of these should be pretty on par, right? We're obviously looking at more leg development, more glute development, etc. in wellness than in bikini, but as far as conditioning goes, these should be pretty on point, meaning Hey, we're not looking for the striations. We're not looking for the separations. We're not looking to see all your muscles. They want to see your shape, your symmetry, your size, your proportion with a right level of conditioning, which is a softer level of conditioning for these divisions, okay? So you don't want to show too much muscle, otherwise it's going to score you down. So with that, the abs can hurt you a lot of times if you're actually too lean there because it kind of gives a hint to the judges, okay, she's showing a six pack. Well, that, that might mean she's too lean. Now let me look at these areas. Oh, that is too lean. Score down, right? So that can actually hurt you more than help you most of the time. Since the abs are not something they're specifically looking at or scoring for that matter, like, oh, does she show two, four, six abs? It's not a factor. You got to have a flat stomach and then you got to know how to present well. The oblique is something that's a little bit different. You do want to show an oblique soft cut most of the time in these divisions, but other than that, it's not super important. Don't focus too hard on the abs. Don't try to bring in really hard conditioning in the abs either because it can, it can honestly score you down.
am. Please make sure you subscribe. If you haven't yet, share this video out for me too. I appreciate it. Okay, so this is from Martin. This is talking about classic physique. How do I get the chest girth, 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 chest girth for classic physique? Okay, so there, he's talking about, Martin here is talking about getting, you know, the projection of your chest basically for side chest and things like that. You want to have, you know, the fullness of the chest. What comes down to getting really the full, fullness of the pectoral muscles for any of the men's divisions is training all parts of them. Okay, so you got to have some stuff that's going to work the upper chest. You got to have some mid-level full chest and you got to do some decline under chest work too. So you want to get the full pack experience. But as far as actually getting, you know, the girth to really show through, it's going to come a majority from the upper and um, the mid-level type pectoral here. Okay, so you want to do different stuff like incline bench. You want to do barbells. You want to do dumbbells. You want to do a lot of incline fly work. You want to do specific stuff that's going to focus on the upper chest for sure to really get that kind of shelf effect but you also want to make sure you're training the chest overall heavy enough with the right amount of compounds to really project it out forward so we're talking about doing normal bench press dumbbell bench press um, dips things like dips are great weighted dips if you can do weighted dips that's going to be just overall a great chest exercise for you uh, different variations of fly is important too and then you know I would suggest some decline work for sure to really just bring in the lower bit too so you want to make sure you're hitting all these things whenever you're training chest don't just go do one exercise or you know four or five that are working the same area you actually want to work that full muscle as a spectrum upper middle and lower and that's going to really give you the girth in classic physique Question number nine, do you suggest meal plans or macro plans while on prep? Tina, I kind of almost answered this way back in question one, I feel like, but I'm going to reiterate it. Tina, the uh, answer is I suggest doing macros, okay, which is contrary to what a lot of prep coaches would tell you, I know, because they want to send you the one fucking meal plan they send everybody, but I suggest doing macros because it allows for flexibility, variability, and better results overall. People can adhere to their nutrition better when they control it, right? If I give somebody a meal plan and say, here's your six meals a day, I want you to eat this every day for the rest of the prep, well, it's likely that person's for one, probably gonna get stuck in some type of a healthy eating disorder is what I call it, healthy eating disorder, where they get eating these six meals and then when the prep's over, they can't figure out how to eat normal food again because they've only been eating one thing and now they're convinced in their mind that anything else is bad for them, right? That's something that happens. It's a huge issue for a lot of competitors, actually. Uh, definitely something you can avoid by doing macros, right? Because you're not stuck to a same meal plan. There's also different food allergies and intolerances and inflammations and things like that that can arise from eating literally the same foods every day. As much as you might think it's fine and the foods could be clean, healthy, whatever foods, your body constantly having to digest the exact same nutrient profile and actually can develop an intolerance to it, right? There's a lot of competitors that actually get intolerant to eat even eggs because of the amount of eggs they eat all the time whether on prep egg white so on and so forth every day of their life for weeks and weeks and months and months well that can actually cause problems cause bloating cause digestive issues there's a whole bunch of myriad of other stuff that can happen with that that you can avoid by doing macros okay and the same really comes down to um, the fact that mentally it is way better to have the flexibility to say, you know what, tonight I don't feel like chicken and rice. I'm going to have something a little bit different. And if it fits my goals, I'm good to do that. And that's why I suggest macro counting, flexible dieting. It's better for the body. It's better for the mindset. Now, with that, you got to make sure you have the right macros. you got to make sure you're following the right breakdowns, the right protocols for you and your physique. So all these things come into play. Again, why it's so important to have a coach. If anybody needs help with their macros, teamffelex.com right now. Hit the pop-up. Put your email in. It's a free trial. We will help you with with your nutrition, your training free for seven days. Number 10 is from Michael. Are cheat days a good thing on prep? Cheat days on prep, Michael. It depends on who you are and what you're doing. First thing I want to say there. Secondly, I would suggest against cheat days because in general, it's just not the best form of going about your nutrition protocol. What I do suggest is flexible dieting. So having a little bit of the ability to choose your foods, maybe fit in some of your cheat foods, 
you know, even daily if you wanted to, but in the right amount that fits your macro goals. Cheat days almost encourage in a lot of ways a binge eating type disorder because basically you're adhering to a very strict diet for X amount of days and then you're going to go off on a cheat day and eat whatever you want, you know, then feel like shit, recover from it, go back to your other nutrition and wait for the next one. And that's just a not a healthy thing to train for your body or for your mind. So I suggest flexible dieting where you can fit little bits in, you know, instead of eating a pizza with 20 24 slices, you have one piece of pizza on Monday night or something like that, it fits into your goals and so it doesn't do a lot of damage. Because the research does show with nutrition, what we're looking at that works the best is adhering to the right calories, the right macros. How you do it, what foods matters less than you know the fact that <laughs> hitting your actual calories and macros is what gets the results, okay? So that's why I suggest flexible dieting. I'm not a huge advocate of cheat days. Uh, refeeds, I do suggest those sometimes for certain competitors, it's something different though. It's it's not a cheat day. A refeed is a calculated approach to increasing a specific macro or calories overall for a specific desired result. A cheat day is basically just a free for all, a fuck it, you know, go have whatever you want. And it's not something I strongly encourage for people that are on prep, especially, but just in general. All right. Question number uh, 11 right here. We got two more to go. How do I figure out what suit cut to get for bikini? Ashley, uh, what I suggest is that you get a suit cut that fits your physique, okay? And so, if you're a first time competitor, you might not know that yet. And this is why a lot of times it's not the best idea to ask your coach what suit cut to get. What you should actually do is get in with a suit designer, okay? Most of the suit designers out here in the game now do consultations and they will help you figure this out. Uh, Amanda Luis, I got a shout out to her because she is the best in the game and she does these for free. So if you go to her website, amandaluiswimwear.com, you can get in with her right now and she'll do a consult with you for free and help you figure out what color, what connectors, what cut, all that. And that's what I suggest. Uh, people, my clients sometimes ask me about suit cuts and I say, okay, well, I know for most part because of how many people I coach, we're talking about pro cuts and Brazilians for the most part, right? Those being the two main ones and the ones people want and the ones that most people wear. There's all a whole bunch of other ones and depending on what suit designer you actually go with, they name them all whatever random they decide basically. So it can be very confusing. I suggest getting in with a consult, go to a and Luis and she can help you for sure. Question number 12. Should I train legs for men's physique? And this person wanted to remain anonymous, probably because, uh, you know, men's physique gets some bad reps sometimes for not training legs. But uh, all the men's physique compares I train do train legs, okay? I think it's important still, even though it's not necessarily being scored right, they make you wear the board shorts because they're not looking at the quads, so, so on and so forth. It does help to have balance in the physique, I believe, as a coach, more so than not at all, right? Sometimes we see men's physique compares that literally you can tell it do not train any legs and it just looks a little bit ridiculous sometimes and the balance is just totally off. Balance is already a pretty off in men's physique as it is, you know what I mean? Meaning like we're not looking at the legs, we're not looking at the thighs compared to the shoulders, so on and so forth like they do in bodybuilding and other divisions. But uh, they're still looking at, you can still see the calves and it is a more balanced, more symmetrical, just overall a more, you know, I don't even know how to say it. It's an overall better look, I think, when you train your calves a bit too. So I have everybody train legs if they do men's physique. They might only do it one day a week, and we're not doing super heavy, crazy leg days. You know, we're doing calf work specifically. We're doing some quad work, some hamstring work. I want people to do that for overall health and wellness. I don't want people getting asymmetrical and walking on stilts their whole life, you know what I mean, and then having you know injuries or hurting themselves or whatever. So I have people train legs for health and wellness as well as some aesthetics when it comes to men's physique. So I do see suggest you train it even though it's not heavily scored it's not going to be a specific area they're looking at your upper body for the most part I do believe for your health and wellness as well as a sometimes a better aesthetic to train your legs in men's physique
Thanks for watching Gains O'Clock. I'm Ryan Milton from Team Flex. Please make sure you share the video, subscribe to the channel, and anybody who's watching, if any of this stuff was helpful, I suggest you go to the teamflex.com right now, Team FFLEX. Dot com. There's a free trial for our coaching. It's going to pop up. All you do is put your email in. It's free trial. Nothing to pay. Nothing at all. I'm not even going to get your card info or anything. You just go in there. It's totally free. It invites you to our coaching app. Me or one of my coaches will set you up. We'll work with you. We'll help you where you're at free for seven days. We just want to do this as a give back to the community, to the fitness world, to all you competitors out there. We appreciate you so much. We want to help you do better, get further, win these damn comps, right? So if you're interested in all in experiencing world-class coaching, literally world-class, for free. You go to teamffelex.com right now and you can do that. It's a free experience. You'll love it. And we'll get you in the coaching app. It's really cool. It's just overall, it's a value app. You should check it out. There's no reason not to. I don't even know what else to say about it. It's a no-brainer to me. Like, go do it. It is a free trial, world-class coaching. Go check that out. Thanks for watching Gains O'Clock. I'm Ryan Milton from Team Flex. Once again, subscribe to the channel. Share the video if you haven't yet. Thank you so much. Coach Ryan is out.